Hi everybody. Welcome to Chaplet Monday, as I said, coming to you live from Corpus Christi, Texas, the home of my parents. Happy Memorial Day to everyone in the United States. Both my parents are former military. My brother is active duty Air Force. I have a huge love of the military and those who um, serve our country. But our biggest prayer tonight is for all those who gave their lives and sacrifice for our freedoms and all the families that continue, that have to continue living um, without their loved ones. So we thank God for all those who serve our country, but especially those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, giving their lives for our freedoms. And we remember that, we reflect on that. This Memorial Day today, and we offer up prayers for their remaining family here on earth. And thank you to anyone praying with us tonight who served in the military, in any branch of the military, any first responders, we thank God for you. There's a lot of intentions this week, so make sure you're putting them in the comments. Make sure you are typing them in or even putting personal intention if you're not comfortable sharing the um, details of your intentions, please feel free to put in personal intentions. We are live streaming from Corpus Christi, the home of my parents and my husband's parents. So it was a good weekend with them. Haven't been able to bring the boys down for about a year, so it's been really awesome. All right, so tonight we conclude our series on the apparitions of Our Lady. And we have done four um, episodes on Our Lady's apparitions. So we began with Our Lady of Czestochowa from Poland. We moved into Our Lady of China. Last week we did Our Lady of Charity, patroness of Cuba, Nuestra Señora de la Caridad del Cobra. And tonight we introduce you to Our Lady of Cabejo, patroness of Africa. And so I tried to find a good collection of apparitions from around the world just so we could broaden our understanding of how much Our Lady loves all of us and how much she longs for everyone from every culture, from every country, from every walk of life, how she longs for all of us to fall in love with her son. My mom is on her computer trying to attach the prayer sheet. If you haven't already downloaded it, you can find it on our website, hrccr.com or hrccr.com slash chaplets. So if you're watching live, you can download it from our homepage. And if you're watching after, I don't know the date. If you're watching after Monday, May 30th, then you can find this prayer sheet along with all of the chaplet Mondays we've done before at hrccr.com slash chaplets. You can find over 100 saint stories and their chaplets. You can also reach out, um, direct message us, private message myself or Sharon for any of these chaplets. There's mom. Hi. And mom, you can come in, in and pray too after you put up the link if you want. Um, then they can have two voices like when the boys are praying with us. So Our Lady of Cabejo, Patroness of Africa, this uh, vision, this apparition comes out of a small town near Rwanda. So um, it's going to be, some of you may be familiar with the stories out of Rwanda. They're not, um, they're not really happy stories. They're not really um, happy ending stories, but this is probably why Our Lady felt it so um, important to visit Cabejo. Uh, she made herself known to some young girls. First, she made herself known to a 16-year-old girl who went to a Catholic school in Cabejo. Um, the, the, the school was founded by a parish priest um, in 1967. And then in 1981, Our Lady came to a young 16-year-old and she presented herself under the name Mother of the Word or Nyana Wajambo. So, Naina, maybe, Naina Wajambo, um, Mother of the Word. 
Um, the young girl immediately recognized her as the Blessed Virgin Mary, mother of our Savior, and she would end up seeing Our Lady several times. Now, when she attempted to tell her teachers and um, everyone at the school, they thought she was crazy. Now, that's very common in these visions of Our Lady, the stories that we've had throughout the past five weeks. It's very common for those who see Our Lady to be thought of as fanatical, as um, almost mad, or um, maybe attention-seeking. And that happened with this young girl, Alphonsine, as well. Um, she was young, and so a lot of people uh, actually, and from where she originated from, so she had come from, um, let me see the the country or the the little town she had come from was actually known for um voodoo and uh witchcraft and magic but of a dark magic and so there were people that were very skeptical thinking that she was possessed by evil or um uh, just seeking attention that it would be found and they were afraid that this was all a, a large ploy to um, um, to draw people into darkness and um, worship of the devil and other dark forces and so there was a lot of skepticism and I'm actually I appreciate the skepticism and here's why um, a lot of Catholicism, the, the cultures and the prayers and things like that can be taken and twisted. And you'll find that um, um, in places like Africa, some places in South America, things like that, where Catholicism is taken and twisted and kind of used for dark darkness, used for evil. And so I'm glad that the authorities, the administration were very skeptical. They wanted to make sure there was no attachments to any evil spirits. Um, they wanted credibility and so they actually thought that it would be better if Our Lady came to more than just this young girl um, again because she came from a region known for the practice of magic and so if more people were to see Our Lady then it would be maybe more believable well Alphonsine agreed in her mind she agreed and she asked Our Lady please can you make yourself known to other girls in this school other people just so they believe in you so that they know that I'm telling the truth and two other women saw Our Lady very soon after now one of them it was very um, I think it was very wise of Our Lady to go to her because this young lady was a 21 year old and been very outspoken against the visions so she had been very outspoken against Alphonsine and then suddenly Marie Claire saw Our Lady in 1982. Natalie, a 17-year-old, also saw Our Lady. Natalie began to share that what she was being told by Our Lady was the message of redemptive suffering, an unceasing prayer for a world that was very bad and at risk of falling into a bit an abyss. And Marie Claire was actually given messages to pray the rosary of the seven sorrows of Our Lady and an urgent call to repentance. So these visions were very much a call to um, conversion for, for everyone who was hearing about these visions. And again, Marie Claire had been adamantly opposed to Alphonsine's visions. So for her to be one that Our Lady chose to come to was wise on Our Lady's part, as usual, you know why are we surprised but wise of her to come to uh, Marie Claire so that there was no doubt everyone knew Marie Claire was very skeptical and very outspoken and for her to then turn and say not only is Alphonsine really seeing Our Lady but so am I and so that brought a lot of people into the belief of Alphonsine's visions and also these two young girls Natalie and Marie Claire now they continued to see visions and receive messages and the most important part is they, they started a group at the school um, reciting the rosary accompanying by hymns to Our Lady and so they were even feeling that conversion in their hearts but they were also doing something about it so there was action following the messages. They were 
um, they began the group, the prayer group at school, and it began to grow. Um, so there were a number more of apparitions, and sometimes uh, there were some apparitions by other visionaries, um, uh, supposedly apparitions of Jesus, but those could not be confirmed. In fact, those actually... Um, Those were actually, let me see what the word that they use. And I think that this is really important. Okay. After July, 1982, there was a question of alleged apparitions of Jesus. That was seven months after the first apparitions of Our Lady. But after some time, the alleged apparitions of Jesus um, were discredited. This again tells me how hard the church works to make sure that these visions are real, to make sure that they are credible and that the messages that are being portrayed or presented to the visionaries and then shared to the pilgrims and the believers, that it in no way comes against church teaching. So for parts of the alleged visions and parts of the alleged apparitions to be discredited it almost makes the others even more credible right because they could have discredited all of them or they could have believed all of them but they really really investigated each one and the apparitions of jesus christ um, were discredited now there's not a lot of information on that here with the investigation but it has me believing that the messages that the the other so-called visionaries were seeing of jesus may have given messages that were um, uh, that countered Catholic teaching, that countered Christ's word from scripture. And so whenever that happens, the church will adamantly deny that those are uh, credible um, apparitions. So this is important when you are choosing devotions to, um, um, to attach yourself to, that you attach yourself to the devotions that have been heavily investigated, that um, um, have been really looked at by the church and have been deemed worthy of praying. Um, and now, it's also very important to understand that believing in any of these visions or attaching yourself to devotions that these visions um, or apparitions embrace or celebrate or promote it's also not necessary for your salvation. Now, this is so good for us to learn about because what does Our Lady always do? She always points to her son. But it's not necessary that you develop an, um, a devotion to Our Lady of Cabejo or Our Lady of China or Our Lady of Charity from Cuba or Our Lady of Chesahova. But all of these are so beautiful to see God's continued work in our world today, 2,000 years after his son was sacrificed. So he continues to allow his mother to visit us. And her primary goal is never to put herself on a pedestal. It's never to gain the attention and notoriety for herself, but it's always to point to her son. So make sure when you, when you fall in love with these devotions that you are never overwhelming yourself with, um, with love for Our Lady without also that reflecting a love for her son. Does that make sense? Our Lady would never want us to talk to her more than we're talking to Jesus. However, we all know um, how much honor that she was given by Christ himself and how we should imitate everything that our Lord did. And he loved her with his whole being and his whole self. So we are imitating our Savior by loving his mother, right? So that was a long way of putting to say it's not important that you, you know, it's not, it's not, um, uh, required for your salvation, that you believe that Our Lady of Cabejo really came, appeared to these teenage girls. But the church does recognize this as a valid and credible um, apparition. So there's a little bit of history here at the bottom for the church and their um, um, recognition of it. So the visions um, proved to be prophetic. And this is another thing that the church looks at. And this is what I was talking about with Rwanda. So the visions had warned the girls about a great darkness that would befall and how they would need to stay close to Jesus. And between 1994 and 1995, the civil and ethnic wars between the Hutus and Tutsis 
The genocide claimed 800,000 lives in Rwanda, among whom were three bishops and more than 400 priests and religious. And Marie Claire, if you'll remember, she was one of the visionaries. She was also killed during the massacre. That's really important because the people did cling to Our Lady during that time of trial and tribulation. And a lot of people were so grateful that she had already come to Rwanda, had already come to Cabejo, had already given the people that comfort, that encouragement, um, the love of a mother. And so they could cling to her throughout that horrible massacre and genocide. In 1988, Bishop Jean Baptiste of the Diocese of Butare allowed public worship at the Marian Shrine of Cabejo and named it Our Lady of Sorrows. And on June 21st, 2001, the Holy See did give its approval. So one thing that Our Lady of Cabejo encouraged everyone to do was to pray the seven sorrows of Our Lady. Now you can find that already on our chaplet page, hrccr.com slash chaplets. So tonight we will be praying a chaplet, a decade rosary chaplet as we have for the entire series of Our Lady. And again, if you have felt a connection to any of these apparitions of Our Lady or these names of Our Lady, please reach out to us. Um, again, I ordered medals from France, colored medals from France. And so these can be used in place of your rosary. If you have really beautiful rosaries and you don't want to break them by keeping them in your pocket all day or lose them, uh, my father's lost a beautiful rosary before. Um, these are beautiful alternatives to keep in your pocket so that you always have a rosary on you. And again, that's that's the whole purpose of making these decade rosaries this, um, this month, the month of Mary, the month of May. And so here is Our Lady of Cabejo. And you can see her beautiful with the sun behind her. And this is the recognized um, image um, what she was described as looking like. And then there's also a tiny saint and she's so beautiful. So here you see the tiny saint of Our Lady of Cabejo with her flowers and her dark skin. She's absolutely beautiful. So again, if you ever felt, if you felt a connection at all through the month of May with any of these visions of Our Lady, any of these apparitions, any of these names of Our Mary, please let us know. We have many extra chaplets left over. Sharon brought her extras over so that they could be given away. So we have extras left over. If you fell in love with any of these stories of Our Lady, any of these um, images, let us know and we would love to make you a decade rosary. So please um, help uh, find yourself a, a quiet place. Let's um, enter into the chaplet portion of this evening. Let's bring ourselves to a quiet, reflective, and meditative place by taking a few deep breaths and ask ourselves what we really need from God tonight. So please put your intentions into the comments. I'll be scrolling up to read all of them. I definitely want to lift up the victims in Uvalde above all for the first responders, especially the father who charged through the door. Um, but we pray for all the families who have to live without their sweet, innocent children. We pray for their pain and their suffering. We ask God that you provide them your incredible comfort, comfort that can only come from you with such a tragedy. We pray for the healing, continued healing of Kristen and Rick. May you get better soon. I lift up every single one of you praying with us tonight. I thank you for being here on Memorial Day, holiday weekend. Thank you for being here to pray with us. So we'll, we will begin on the crucifix with the opening prayer. And I'm just going to scroll up and see if we've got any more intentions for this evening. But 
Hello, Bernadette. Hi, Elena. Hi, Angela. Lauren. There's Sharon. Angela, we are lifting up prayers for your family and friends. Bernadette, we pray for the family of Janice Toman. Everyone is still having such a hard time accepting her passing and living without her. We lift up Angela's son to get approved for his disability. Francis lifts up everyone who is sad or hurting. We lift up all of your intentions tonight and pray for my children and all those who are entering summer break that they stay safe. Pray for all marriages, lift up all marriages. Pray for vocations, pray for all of our friends who are seminarians and all those discerning the religious life in any capacity, male or female. God, that you would call them into greater love of you and to deeper prayer with you. Pray for all of our um, diocesan priests, those that are pastors at their parishes. God, give them hearts, uh, servant hearts, but also protect them from judgment and, and hatred. God, keep them strong. Please feel free to put intentions into the comments even as we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Word, Mother of all those who believe in Him and welcome Him into our lives, we have come here before you to contemplate you. We believe that you are among us as a mother with her children, even if we cannot see you with our eyes. You are a sure path which leads us to Jesus the Savior. We bless you for all the good things that you continue to give us, especially because you consented to appear in a miraculous way at Cabejo at the time when our world needed you so much. Give us always the light and the strength that we need to eagerly welcome your call to convert ourselves, to repent, and to live according to the gospel of your Son. Teach us to pray without hypocrisy and to love one another as he loved us so that as you have asked us, we might always be like beautiful flowers with beautiful perfume spreading everywhere. Amen. We move to the first bead and we pray that our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We move on to ten Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We pray the closing prayer on the medal. Holy Mary, Mother of Sorrows, teach us to understand the value of the cross in our lives so that we may complete in our bodies that which is lacking in the passion of Christ in benefit of his mystical body, which is the church. And when our pilgrimage on this earth ends, allow us to live eternally with you in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lady of Cabejo, Pray for us. That concludes our month of Our Lady, the month of Mary. You can find other chaplets on our chaplet page for Our Lady, specifically for Our Lady. We put those at the top, the Sacred Heart, any to do with Jesus, the face of Jesus, and also all of Our Lady's chaplets that we've done so far for the last two years. So please help yourself to printing those prayer sheets or asking for the chaplets which we put a prayer sheet in when we get you the chaplets so let us know if you would like any of these chaplets thank you so much for joining me here in corpus christi this will be my last week and we're heading back so pray for us as we travel back home that we are kept safe on the roads I love you all so much. We go back into our regularly scheduled chaplets next week with according to the dates. And so our next chaplet will be St. Aloysius Gonzaga. Very amazing. And then we move into St. Jose Maria Escriva. And then we go into one that you may have heard of, St. Paul. So please continue to join us every Monday live at 8 p.m. here on Facebook for Holy Rosary Rosenberg. And if you don't catch us live, have no fear. We upload these to our YouTube page. So make sure you find us on YouTube. You subscribe to our videos and you see all of these whenever you have time to pray them. God bless you all. I hope you have a beautiful evening and an even more beautiful week. And tonight, may you sleep with the angels and rise with the saints. God bless you all. Good night.